God bless you. I do appreciate you staying with us to view the broadcast. And today I'm going to be sharing along a theme regarding the birth of Jesus Christ. And I'd like to read a scripture from the book of Matthew. This has regards to Joseph of the appearing of the angel of God to him. So I'm reading from the book of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel chapter chapter 1 and I'd like to read verse 24. I read from the New International Version. It says, "When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and they gave him the name Jesus." This is a very interesting story. The angelic appearance to Joseph. May I give you a little background? The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, letting Mary know that she was selected by God to bear the Messiah, to bring forth the Messiah. And so Mary, even though she didn't fully understand all that was going to happen, she agreed with the angel of God and said, Be it unto me according to thy word. And so the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and caused the word to be made flesh. And so Mary was found with child by Joseph, and Joseph knew that that child did not belong to him. And so Joseph, being a man who loved the woman he was engaged to, very decent man indeed, he did not want to make Mary a public example because back in the day, if you were found to be unfaithful to the person you were engaged to, or even unfaithful during marriage, the Lord demanded that you be stoned to death. And so Joseph did not want Mary to be exposed to that kind of public treatment. And so he came to a decision to quietly divorce Mary. The angel of God appeared to him and started to deal with him. Let me say this to you. If you have a real serious earnest question about God and the things of God, God will meet with you. God does not allow us to go through life trying to trip us up. God doesn't set traps for you as you go through life. No. God has given us his word to guide us. God's word is direction for living. As you read the Bible, you would see the way God intends for you to go, the way he intends for you to live. And so Joseph was perplexed. He did not want to really do what he was going to do, but he felt he had no other course. He needed guidance. May I say to you, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway. God's word will give us guidance. God has given us his word to see us through life. Don't neglect the Bible. Take time to read it, to study it, with the intent of following it. God's word is not just simply to give knowledge. God's word is to give you direction for living, to show you the way that you ought to go. And so Joseph, when he thought about putting Mary away, the angel of God appeared to him in a dream. And the angel shared with Joseph the prophecies that the scriptures gave about the Messiah coming into the world. Joseph was familiar with those prophecies. Listen to what um, was said. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So Joseph was familiar with that. What the book of Isaiah said, 
that a virgin will be with child. And he was reminded of that. God will help you if you have real sincere questions about your future and the direction your life should take. You consult with God and God will direct you. God will help you. God doesn't set trap, a trap for you. No, God wants to guide you in the way that you ought to go. God's word has answers to your questions. You don't have to grope in the dark. You don't have to make the wrong decisions. God's word will guide you. But take time, first of all, to commit your life to Christ. When you commit your life to God, you know that God is your Father. He seeks your best interest, and he will guide you in the right way. And so Joseph was told by the angel, don't be afraid to take Mary home to be your wife. And so Joseph, he made that quality decision. When he got up, he took Mary home to be his wife, and he had no union with her until they gave birth, she gave birth to her firstborn, and they called his name Jesus. Joseph made a quality decision to do what God told him to do. As you follow this whole story, you will notice that Joseph's role in the birth of Christ does not seem to have been a primary role. What do I mean by that? Mary seemed to have been the person getting all the attention. Uh, she's the one who gave birth to Jesus. But I want you to notice that Joseph was prepared to play his secondary role well. He was prepared to give his best to God so that he was the protector and the provider both for Mary and for the baby Jesus. And so you could recall that they had to journey to Egypt when Herod wanted to kill all the babies that were born in Bethlehem. The angel of God appeared to Joseph during the night telling him to take the young child and his mother and go down to Egypt. And here Joseph got up during the night, making that long, treacherous, difficult, hazardous journey, going down to Egypt. Joseph was prepared to be inconvenienced during the night, taking that long trek. He was their provider. He was their protector. In other words, God had a job for him to do. God had a purpose for his life. And he was prepared to fulfill the purpose for which God called him. I do want to say to you, God has a purpose for your life. The psalmist said, God will fulfill his purpose for me. God had a purpose in the life of Joseph. Yes, Mary was the one who gave birth to the Savior. But Joseph was the one who was the protector and the provider. God has a role for you. God has a purpose in your life, for your life. We are not in the world by chance. Regardless of how you came into the world, you are important to God. The Bible tells us even the very hairs of our head are numbered. You are special to God. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Read about the different characters in the Bible. Look at Moses, for example. Moses, he was put out in a river because the parents, they didn't want him to be killed as all the male child of the Hebrews were being killed. They felt that God has a purpose for Moses. And there they put him in a basket on the Nile River. And Pharaoh's daughter found him. He was raised in Pharaoh's household. Later on, he became the deliverer of the people of Israel. God had a purpose for Moses. God has a purpose for you. Joseph's role 
did not seem in the Bible as a primary role, a secondary role, a supportive role. But he took it seriously. He knew that God had a purpose in his life. I think about Joseph, again in the Bible. Joseph, one of 12 brothers, his brothers sold him into slavery because they envied him. But Joseph did not hold a grudge against his brothers. He felt that God had the purpose for his life. God has a purpose for your life. But it begins with committing your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You may not understand everything about your life, but if you would commit your way to the Lord, he will bring it to pass. I think about a young woman by the name of Esther. We call her Queen Esther. Read her story in the Bible. Through a series of circumstances, of course she was an orphan, but through a series of circumstances, this orphan girl landed up as the queen of Persia. This orphan girl, this Jewish orphan girl, became the queen of the king of Persia. She could have griped about the fact that she was an orphan. Why did God allow my parents to be killed? And so many times in life we complain about our heritage, about what we have gone through. But let's realize that God has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us. And so, look at the story of Queen Esther. When the Jewish people were facing extermination, Esther rose to the occasion, asking her maidens to fast and pray for her, asking all the Jewish people to fast and pray. And they fasted and they prayed before God. Esther went to the king, beseeched the king with her request, and God granted her request, and the Jewish people were spared from extermination. Because one young woman fulfilled the purpose for which God called her. I don't think she had realized what her purpose in life was. And many times as we go through life, we don't fully understand, why am I here? What does God want me to do? But as you commit your way to the Lord, as you put him first, he will direct your paths. I look at the story of Joseph. His role seemed to have been very secondary, but he took it seriously. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Put God first in all that you do. Remember the first commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Realize you have one life. Someone said, only one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Look at the story of Joseph. Right through the birth and the growth of Christ. Joseph was there for him. He was there to play his role, to do his part, to fulfill his purpose. God has a purpose for your life. Not just to eat and sleep and to work. No, God has a purpose for your life. You know, someone said, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. And Joseph did his best to protect his family, to provide for his family. Joseph, he was a carpenter. And do you know that Jesus took after Joseph? As a matter of fact, they called Jesus the carpenter. Joseph did his best in providing for his family, in protecting his family. What he was doing seemed to have been very ordinary. But you know, the Bible tells us whatever we do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Realize that whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. That's exactly what Joseph did. 
he did his best to protect his family, to provide for his family, and most of all, he was obedient to the angel of God. He did what the angel of God told him to do. He was obedient. He was cooperative. When we cooperate with God, when we're obedient to God, wonderful things happen. God wants to use your life, but you must cooperate with him. You must work with him. In the book of Deuteronomy, we see God telling the Israelites, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. God is telling us to choose life. When Jesus Christ came into the world, he said, the thief comes but to kill and to steal and to destroy. Look at John 10, but he said, I am come that they might have what? Life and have it more abundantly. God doesn't want you to be miserable. God wants you to be blessed. But in order to be blessed by God, you must be obedient to God. You must be sensitive to the voice of God. You must do what God wants you to do. And that is to serve him. That is to follow his word. Remember, God's word is direction for living. Many people only follow the Bible when they get in trouble. They only turn to God when things get out of hand. Don't wait until you get in trouble, till life, till life is meaningless before turning to God. Turn to God now. Scripture says, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. The Bible says, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Be obedient to God. Work with God. God has your best interest at heart. Joseph was prepared to do what God told him to do. Because of his obedience, God used him to protect Mary, to protect the baby Jesus, and to provide for them. As you are obedient to God, you never know what God will use your life to do as you are determined to serve God. One day, all of us, we're going to stand before Almighty God to answer for the lives that we have lived. That's why the Bible says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, and verse 10, it says, God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. In the book of Galatians, Scripture says, We should not be wary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Some people give up too quickly. You commit your life to Christ and don't give up, but serve Him with all your heart. Be obedient to God. Be sensitive to God. Cooperate with God. How do we cooperate with God? By following His Word. First of all, committing your life to Christ, following His Word, taking time on a daily basis to read and study the Word and following it. Taking time to talk to God in prayer. Taking time to fellowship with God taking time to fellowship with the people of God. You know, the Bible tells us we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Once we have opportunity, fellowship with other believers where we can be encouraged in the things of God. God used Joseph because Joseph was obedient and cooperative with him. God wants to use your life. If you will be obedient to him, cooperate with him, God will use your life. One day, all of us, we are going to stand before Almighty God and we will be rewarded according to our works. Yes, we will be rewarded according to our works. I want to hasten to say, your works will not save you. But once you are saved, you work for God, you labor for God, and one day you will be rewarded for the works you have done for God. But without being saved, 
there's no reward coming to you. And so it's most important if, you go, if you're going to be obedient to God, commit your life to Christ. Serve God with all your heart. And so I would like to challenge you to make a commitment of your life to Jesus. If you have not committed your life to Christ, right where you are, I'd like to encourage you to do so. May I lead you in a prayer, a very simple prayer, as you ask Jesus to come into your heart, would you? Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus who gave his life on the cross for my sin. Come into my heart, forgive my sin, change my life. Make me the person you want me to be. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let me pray with you, Father. I ask, O oh God, that the miracle of the new birth be that of this individual today. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to pray for any other needs you may have. Remember, we serve a miracle-working God with whom all things, not just some, but with whom all things are possible. Can we pray together? Father, I lift up this individual before you, whatever the need might be. There might be sickness represented, Father, in this home, a financial problem, a domestic situation. Oh, God, I ask for your help. I ask for your intervention in the life of this person and in this home. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I would like you to join me in prayer as we pray for our nation. Can we join in prayer, Father? I lift up our country before you today. I ask, O oh God, that you will grant wisdom and direction to those in authority over us. I ask for your hand of protection to rest upon our residents, your hand of provision, O oh God, to provide for us. I commit our way to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. 